the most disappointed I've ever been in a movie ever. Wow. Bar none. Sorry it wasn't broke back. <laughs> and we are live. Welcome to NBA Live Before Lock. It is Tuesday, April 9th. I'm Josh Engelman. I'm joined by Eric Lindquist. We are brought to you by Sleeper, and we have 55 minutes to go on a truly ridiculous slate. It's big. There's craziness everywhere. The guy that was the chalkiest play of the day when I did the strategy show mm -hmm. isn't on the team any longer. It's been a <laughs> hell of a day. So we're going to break it all down. Hit that like button if you haven't done it yet. Shout out to the Deeper Dive crew before us. But uh, there was no Deeper Dive before us. Shout out to the MLB nope. Live Before Lock crew before us. Let's there have some fun, people. Let's talk some basketball. Eric, what's good? I, I just need the chat to know that if you have ever just loved something as much as what Josh loves Interstellar, you need to get evaluated because truly, it is the most overrated movie ever. And I, I love, I love like Dark Knight. I loved the entire trilogy there. I even can like look at Tenet and there's some like decent parts of Tenet that I enjoy. I cannot back in any way, shape, shape, or form Interstellar. I think it is truly the most overrated, most overhyped, most disappointed I've ever been in a movie ever. It is, it is atrocious that you would have the take to try to defend it. When he watches that like set of videos after they lost time and that's incredible. Like, that's the only oh, good scene for the entire movie. You have no heart. I have no heart. I have no heart. Yes. You have no heart. You're the Tin Man. There we go. Put his face on the Tin Man. Inception and is you're way better than Interstellar. It's Agreed. garbage. So you're Inception also the Cowardly Lion. You are the Cowardly Lion and the Tin Man combined. Like a, what is it, a chimera? What are, when you put two things together? Is that an, yeah, an animal, yeah, right? It's like in Harry Potter, the the griff, like the, the griffin thing. I don't thing, know anything the... about Harry. So yeah, Harry Potter is your scene? Hippogriff. Thank you. There we go. Thank you, Jordan cool. Klein. So you're you're a Harry Potter guy over uh, you're, you much. like children's movies over Interstellar. Did not say that. Also, uh, Prisoner of Azkaban definitely uh, more extreme in terms of thematics. Uh, Inuritu director, fantastic. I don't were the, was that even words? Can you translate whatever you just said to me? It's the director it was fantastic. It, it's what, just a, it's, it's like the very thematically the very president dark. of Kazakhstan. It was Borat. <laughs> you like. I, I legitimately have no idea what what was the pre oh, president of what? He's the he's the director. I'm aware of who the director is of what movie? Prisoner of Azkaban. Okay, that's what I was looking for you to do again. Yeah. I I heard president of Kazakhstan, so that oh, was okay. That, I don't know. That's what we're going for. Yeah, Alfonso Cuarón was the director of Prisoner of Azkaban. Glad glad it was. It, uh, I mean, at another least phenomenal you're actual Oscar winning directors at this yeah, point. Yeah, I am. I am. Kobe? Unlike Was Christopher Kobe? Nolan for Interstellar, which again, and then Oppenheimer's somehow worse. And movies are so bad these days that somehow we're going to give them the Academy Award. I mean, I just can't. I can't. And I, I love, love Inception. I think it's one of the best movies that I've ever seen. So I come from a place where it's not biased. Uh, I'm not biased against the director or his style of filmmaking um memento also pretty good but like i truly cannot stand either of those movies whatsoever i i have no idea what you're talking about with interstellar being good i love that you dive into this with like a passionate argument you try to reference some harry potter movie you get the information wrong you sound like stephen a smith talking about the mix hey quentin grimes is looking good not even on the okay. team anymore okay champ. okay okay this is the guy what? you're going to get NBA information about. He's not going to know who's who. Michael Jordan going to win today? I mean, I know Tos Tosar is not. The he's on the G League team. I, I know that. That's cool. All right. Let's get into this bad boy. There's some Memphis guys that are playing basketball today. We should talk about them. We're going to hit this first super chat that okay. just came in from Radham. Let's imagine Harden is out. Which Clippers players get a cyst bump with both Kawhi and Harden out other than Westbrook? I mean, is that serious? Like, we're looking at pretty much, like, all of the guys. Paul George, Russell Westbrook, Norman Powell, Terrence Mann. Like, what else would you be looking for? They're uh, not Paul George, slate. in particular, is going to look a lot better. Now. I'll just pull up Wowie and do it in two seconds, Eric. That, that would make more sense. 
Um, we take Mr. Hall George, put him on the floor. Actually, we'll just take James Harden off, and we'll take Kawhi off. Sample. Oddly Oddly enough, take both of them off. That would make more sense. Ball handling. Here we are, and it is. God, why is why are we so weird? It's got like the Mavericks every time that I click on it. There you go. Um, I'm running it too, so I'm, I'm I'm trying to beat you to it. I got you. Twenty five point. Uh, so oh, now it took James Harden off as soon as I refreshed it. So bas- basically nobody. If we're talking about assists, uh, Paul George is at like six point eight per one hundred possessions, which is a pretty standard rate for him. Russ gets up over ten per hundred possessions. Mm-hmm. Um. Only Bones Highland sniffs anything else relevant, and that's in 82 minutes alongside mm-hmm. most of the guys that are available here. So there isn't really much of an assist bump. It seems like the ball just stays in Paul George and Russell Westbrook's hands for that kind of stuff. Yeah, overall base rate, Paul George, 313 minutes, no hard, no Kawhi, 25.1% assist rate. You brought up Bones Highland, 219 minutes without them, 32.9% assist percentage, but I don't think that would be maintaining. We've seen a lot more... Of, uh, yeah, I'm looking through Terrence Mann, nothingness. Russell Westbrook, 33.3%. So, yeah, I mean, it's definitely Russ. And then probably nobody else. Pretty standard, really, for Paul George. There we go. So, appreciate that super chat, man. Thank you so much. Let's get it started at the top with our favorite payups for today. And as we look at it now, I'm refreshing our Boom Bus tool, which was updated eight minutes ago. So, we have all mm-hmm. of the information we could possibly want. Mm-hmm. We got a lot of payups today. We have 12-7, Luka Doncic, 12-2, Nikola Jokic, 11-7, Giannis, 11K, Victor Wembanyama. We have 10-9, Joel Embiid, 10-2, DeMontis Sabonis, 10-1, SGA. We're going to draw the line at the 10Ks for right now. So I ask you, who's the best payup option today? Well, Victor Wembanyama, because, I mean, this is a spot against Memphis where we're going to have interest in the other side of this. And it's just such an easy, just bring it along for the ride. Probably going to st- uh, stuff this Jameson character, especially after I took his over 20 and a half PRA. Um, probably going to stuff him a million times at the rim. Uh, Victor Wembanyama playing freaking weird minutes now. Uh, 34-ish minutes. The last two, we have him in for 34 again here today. 43 there in that last spot. Again, just outlier type minute situations compared to what he's had the rest of the way this season. And don't forget everybody of substance on San Antonio is out. So we're talking about an improvement to his 1.7 fantasy points per minute, right? We've got center where, you know, there's not like the, the jam, all of the centers and all of the land type situations that we've had on a couple of these slates where we had tons of value down there where you wanted to rotate around those guys. I look at Wemby as kind of the premier guy, especially because of who he's sharing the floor with, and that's Memphis. No disagreements. I don't know how you get to anybody else first in this list. He's a, You want to build your lineup, find out it's really chalky, and turn Victor Wembanyama into DeMontis Sabonis? Like, sure. I, I can understand some ownership pivots if you want to do those things, but uh, 29% optimal. The next closest guy in this entire range is at 13%. That would be Nikola Jokic. Wemby's just in a great spot. I do find it at least a little in, a little interesting. This is going to sound dumb, but I, I think I mean what I say. Obviously, Wemby's just going to beast all over this Grizzlies team. They're all made-up players. Like, none of them are real. But it does intrigue me a little bit what Memphis really is. Like, Wemby's weak-ish right now, and Trey Jameson is built like a six foot eight fire hydrant. I mean, this dude is a stump of a human being. I think he's going to be able to get in on Wemby. Just it's the part that scares me a little bit. He's thick. He's heavy. He can move him around. It might not matter because you move Wemby, you know, a foot off of the block with a, a hard move. His arm is just still probably out over the top of your head. So it might not matter because Trey Jameson has no real talent, but I'm at least a little concerned about his strength. He might just foul out immediately, too. Yeah, that that is a thing that's live, I suppose. I I think probably the thing that we don't talk about enough with Wemby for being a young player and as block, like part of it is, I guess he's just so much taller than everybody. There's no way that he actually hits them arm to arm or has to lay into them. But like he avoids foul trouble at an elite level and yeah. he doesn't ever 
ever get into foul trouble. I can't remember a single no. time where I've rostered him this season where I've been like, oh, Wemby got two quick ones. Here he goes to the bench. And maybe part of that is that we'll just never see him play 38, 40 minutes in rotational spots until maybe until they're real next season, until they're yeah. like real, until they're a real operational basketball team. But I mean, Wemby is so good at avoiding foul trouble. And you look at some of the other matchups where you have comps that, you know, what you're bringing up there. Because again, that's like a, I like the no ball take bringing it here to the program. That's not so bad. But I mean, you just saw him go toe to toe with like Jokic, 40% yeah. usage, nine blocks on the guy. Joker's laughing afterwards in the press conference talking about how absurd it is. He goes, yeah, he was talking shit and he just stuffs me nine times. And it's like, whatever, what am I going to do with this guy? But it was a pretty great presser talking about it after the fact. But like Joker is thick. Joker is a big man and uh, he's got a couple of inches on Mr. Trey Jamison. So like, Truth. I, I think we got to kind of like not worry so much about that. For me, it comes down to like, from a fantasy point per perspective, you remove everybody from the equation of any kind of mattering uh, on the San Antonio side of things. I mean, they're, they're legitimately shorthanded for guys who actually matter that they want to give rotational minutes to. So no Sohan, no Vassell, uh, Bassey's out, I suppose. Kelton Johnson now out for a couple of games. Chetty Osman. I mean, the usage, they're, they're just going to continue to develop him, let him shoot, you know, 35, 40% usage every single time out. He's going to get six, seven blocks in like standard, like routine ways. I mean, Wembenyama is such an anomaly to like anybody we've seen in the NBA. So like, you know, he's the number one guy for me. Uh, yeah. And it just helps that he comes along with all these Memphis pieces. Are you? Do you have your eye on any of the other pay-up options here? We have Jokic as the second best option in terms of optimal rate. Um, DeMontis Sabonis not too far behind. There's just a lot of center talent. I mean, we have four yeah. center-only options, 10K or higher, with a fifth in Giannis, who basically has no chance to ever get put in that center spot. Yeah, I think the Jokic one is very, very intriguing to me. So, Luka, it's tough with, you know, being Charlotte. It's... a Great matchup in terms of like the defense on the other side, but the total not where you would necessarily want it to be. Um, Luca playing alongside Kyrie, uh, he's doing everything for this basketball team. It's Luka Doncic. If you want to get to a ton of him at 12 7, a point guard, go right ahead. But yeah. I think Jokic for 500 less, we're paying very close attention to playoff probabilities. There's lots of spots you can get on my favorite. It's the easiest way to do it. Look at the playoff probabilities on dunks and threes. And for me, Denver, 30% chance to get the one seed. My Timberwolves at 58.3%. They're both double-digit favorites. This feels like the gimme game where they kind of just have to get it done. And then coming down to the end of the season, you've got two games less for, left for each of them. There's the Phoenix game that's like a glaring highlight-centered, starred Minnesota uh, Sunday game that you have going there. So uh, if Denver wins out and Minnesota stumbles in any one of these spots, there's a chance that they can overtake them. And so I think you're playing Jokic still pretty close to like his full allotment of minutes. Jamal Murray, I don't know how many minutes you have him in for, but I'm pretty trepidatious that he gets close to 30. Um, I'd be putting him at like 27, 20 in on a high mark uh, in this sure. spot against Utah, 14 and a half point favorites. Uh, for me, it comes down to like, Joker playing 32 minutes and still limited capacity of uh, Jamal Murray seems pretty interesting to me too. And taking Aaron Gordon off the floor, you know, you take uh, guys where it's Michael Porter Jr., Aaron Gordon, and then Jokic, all pretty damn good rebounders, all six, nine or taller. Uh, now you take Christian Brown and supposedly put him to the starting unit. It could be Justin Holiday if they want to do that. But for all intents and purposes, Jokic, I think is number two. All righty. Let's open up that 9K range as well. We've got Tatum at 9,700, Anthony Edwards at 9,500, uh, DeJounte Murray at 94, Halliburton 93, Brunson 92, Fox 91. Lot. If, if the 10K plus range is centers, this range is heavy on the old point guards. But what's interesting, Jalen Brunson's 16% owned. That's the most in this range. That's the most of anybody that we've talked about so far, excluding Wemby. Not a ton of individual ownership going to one in, like one specific guy other than Victor Wembanyama. So do you see anything more interesting in the 9K range? Sort of, are you, if you're paying up for Wemby, are you grabbing somebody else here too? Uh, I think I'm pulling a, a card out of your pocket. Or I, what's the saying? I'm no, taking no. something from you that isn't... No, that's creepy. Anthony Edwards is the guy that I'm getting hmm. after. Uh, 9,500 for him. Sm a shooting guard, small forward. Minnesota brought it up before. 58% chance to get this one seed. You just kind of want to emphatically go out and just 
wax this Washington team without Kuzma. And if it gets done, yeah. it's probably going to be a lot of Ant who helps do it. Uh, it's one of the best spots you can get in the entire NBA, taking on Washington there at home. A uh, beautiful time to to have Anthony Edwards there. I'm worried about DeJounte Murray, not just because of the matchup, but like Atlanta doesn't have anything really to play for. Chicago, um, they're pretty locked into getting the nine seed. So Atlanta more than likely on the road, taking them on in that play-in tournament first round. Uh, Tyrese Halliburton taking on Toronto is okay, but um, not really going to land on him over Jalen Brunson or De'Aaron Fox, I think, in their respective matchups. So I'm getting to about the field on them, but Anthony Edwards is the guy that I'm more than double the field on. We got a super chat from Mr. Biggs. We could hit on that pretty quickly. That won't take long. The three core cash plays on DraftKings and the Viagra play of the night. I don't know if there's a, a gimmick behind that one, but I'm going to say it's the guy, I don't know, that gets me the hardest. <laughs> I don't know what that means. That's what it means. You cash plays. Cash plays. Jordan Goodwin. Memphis good point guard, 5,500, the highest owned guy that we have right now. The Pereira character, the Pippin character. like no, There is probably... no Pereira character anymore. He's not? Oh, then it's the Goodwin character, the Pippin character. I'm just yeah. thinking off the top of my head. for No, who Pere- is. Pereira is the Pereira's guy gone. that started off the day as the highest yeah. owned guy on the strategy show. And then when the show ended, yeah. we found out that he is no longer on yeah. the Memphis Grizzlies. You okay, got Timmy. Timmy Allen going to probably be starting for them tonight. That'll be fun. Uh, and then Jack White plays basketball now. Who knew? Who knew? I made that joke on the strategy show this morning, too. I was Did like, oh, really we play? got an alert. It's uh, what is happening in Memphis. So honestly, yeah. uh, jokes aside for the cash plays, it's Jordan Goodwin. It's Scotty Pippen, both at the top of the list from an ownership perspective in terms of value. And then assuming you're paying up for one guy, it's 100 percent Victor Wembanyama. Yeah, I there, there's nobody else. And then just depending on what else you're putting in there, you could go to Jokic. You could go to Doncic. I wouldn't care, but I probably want one of the two. All righty. Anybody else you want to touch on that is like standing out to you that we pay up for? Not the standout isn't really the word for it. Um, I think the one thing to be careful of is like, as you're paying attention to ownership and you see stuff like, oh, Jason Tatum is low owned or something like that. Keep in mind what they're playing for and it's absolute squad diddly douche. So I, I just think this time of year, you should just be very, very cautious. Uh, the breaking bad thing where, Walter White closes the the garage door and he goes up to his uh, brother-in-law. He sits there, looks Hank in the eyes, and it's just like, well, then maybe you should tread lightly. A little bit of that. I, I feel like that's kind of uh, what you want to be doing when you see some of these low-owned pieces up there. I mean, can Tatum get there in, in 30 minutes? Sure, but like it's going to be so, so, so remote. And uh, just don't really want to be dabbling with like any of those dudes on the top end that just because they're pulling no ownership. What do you think SGA's minutes are today for what it's worth? 32, 33, somewhere around there. 10 1, no shot, considering he's just a little bit more expensive than those other point guards. And, you know, we've got him close. The only guys, I mean, Brunson and Fox are absorbing the ownership as they should. We have Murray in for a lot more minutes than I do at the moment. I'm not sure what to make of Atlanta going forward, but I, I think the rug could fall out of the, could get pulled out from under us sooner rather than later. I don't see a lot of reason for them to play him 38, 40 minutes, although I guess that could have been said last time out, too. Yeah. He's a he's a tough ask at this point. I mean, they obviously want the win, but they're not going to risk a single thing. Like, there's no... They'd rather just get there with SGA than get there without him, you know? Is my guess. Oh, I was talking about Murray. I th- you, you said how many minutes do you think SGA Oh, plays? yeah, no, I, I asked the SGA one on the front end first, but I was just talking about him relative to, like, other guys in the range. Gotcha. And then DeJounte Murray, you know, just for me... I think 37, 38 might be a little bit heavy when you talk about them yeah. having nothing to play for. It could just really fall out from you. But I think the matchup helps to not feel like I'm missing out on anything. But um, when he puts up 70, I'll probably feel differently. But SGA uh, coming back here right away, I think he could play more than most people do. So I have him for 35 and just think that you don't put him out there unless you're trying to win these basketball games. And, you know, they definitely still have something to play for. Even getting the two seed, a pretty big difference than, you know, playing the third and and having to worry about that potential. Like there's just one team you're worried about uh, potentially being on the road and playing there in Minnesota, it would be. But Oklahoma City just, I don't think they would ever, ever put him out there at this point in time without him being 100%. 
Yeah, I don't I don't think like 34, 35, 36 in this matchup is outside the realm. It's just not I don't think it's where I want to expect his median to be. Good call. But I, I wouldn't be surprised at all. Like if he's good to go, I assume he's just good to go. I, I agree with you there. All right, folks, 1,700 people in the door, only 154 likes, oddly light for right now. But I think I've got something that will make you guys feel a little bit better. We like to give out some of our favorite picks, sometimes thematically, oh. like for right now. It's time for the exotic play of the day. Apparently it's not. Great work, Jordan. Interstellar can't get enough. We wanted to really see your. Oh, good. Colin Sexton had a question. Right. I'll never. Every day, every day, I'm very happy to watch that Jokic Yo three. It should just be that one over and over again. <laughs> I make that Tyler Hero face. Oh my god. Chet. <sighs> Although Chet and SGA should never be allowed to sing again after that commercial. I hate that. Never saw it. Okay. Well, that makes it tough to talk about then. What? Keontae George. There we go. We got it. We got it done. Hello? I'm waiting on you, man. Oh, what did I do? You want, oh, you want me to give you the exotic player of the day? Uh, it's probably going to be a white guy on the Utah Jazz now, if there is one. Nope, there's not. Keontae George, 6K. That's not ideal. Omer Yurt, 7. Don't think he counts. Um, we're going to just go to Jokic here because, again, we have value. There's going to be more value. You're looking for a spend up here and talked about Wemby. Absolutely love Wemby. You can get to lots of Wemby. You can play two centers on DraftKings.com. And Jokic sitting here uh, with the ability to play 32, 33 minutes against Omer Yurt7 seems pretty useful. Uh, Yurt7 probably not going to play that many minutes, going to probably get fouled out before then anyway. But Jokic, just get to some raw points in your life when there is unbelievable amounts of value here. And that's where Wemby has a ton of utility there in that Memphis matchup specifically, but even better, Nikola Jokic, my exotic play of the night. There is only one answer for this question today. Only one. Right here, baby. Right here. It's the Unicornet. Luke Cornet, 3,300. Who needs an 11K Wemby? Who needs a 12-2 Jokic when you can get the Unicornet? He is everyone's favorite white of the night I, I can't believe you brought that as like that's uh, that's your addition to live before lock is is making something even worse than it already was that's great i only bring amazing things to everything i do like this company for instance there you go we're and we're so lucky and proud to have such a special person like you to do it. I've got even something more special than that. This is gonna be nice to you. It's master season, everybody. Kicking off in two days. There's the logo for the master rock. Thursday, master starts, which means we've got some deals for you, depending on which direction you're looking forward to going. Let's talk DFS since this is a DFS show we've got a little bit of a DFS promo. If you want to get 40% off your first payment on any monthly PGA package that we have, data only, Sims and data, or Sims Max, again, 40% off, use the promo code MASTERS. We've got the Sims for our PGA contest, including showdowns. You don't want to miss any of this stuff. It's the best tournament of the year, guys. It's the most important one. The one that's going to have the most money up for grabs. You want to get yourself involved. If you ever play PGA DFS, you should absolutely check out this deal. It'll cover you for the next month. It's not just this week. Do you happen to know what the next few tournaments are by any chance? Uh, Well, coming after this one, uh, well, we'll start doing all the midwest uh like the east coast stuff i'm assuming we're going to north carolina aren't we Pretty we've got soon. the rbc heritage yep the South week carolina. after the byron nelson 
Yep, the Myrtle and the then the Wells Fargo. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Two and two in North Carolina. There's your there's your North Carolina. Yeah, one. shout out Quail Hollow. Uh anyway. That's what you George do. still available on Sleeper for what it's worth, people. There we go. So that's the DFS side. We're not done yet. Oddshopper.com. Use the promo code Masters. Get one week of Odd Shopper for a dollar. That's it. You hate it on day two? Cancel. The only thing you're out is a buck. We take a market-based approach to beating the books and the pick'em sites. You've got parlay builders, odds boost calculators, optimizers for all of the pick'em sites, expected value, expected win rate. You get all of this stuff on a model that is proven at this point. Over 40,000 recommended NBA bets returned at a 4% ROI, and you can make that number go a lot higher by picking and choosing a little bit. We're counting everything, and we're still on the good side of it all. You get it for a dollar. If you are in a legal sports betting state, you should get it. If you're just on the pick'em side, you should get it. There's no reason to not check out what we've got for a dollar. It's that simple. Cancel at any time. The promo code is MASTERS, no matter what you're trying to do. DFS or Odd Shopper, Masters is the code you want. All righty, we can keep this bad boy moving. GPP plays. So it, it is a weird day because we do have a, a pretty healthy concentration of ownership at the top to some real garbage value plays. Where do you want to go to be a little bit different? Because we've got some pretty sizable negative leverage numbers out there. Who do you want to get over the field on that's really not getting a lot of love? Uh, so Luka Doncic is starting to get more intrigued to me uh, as we're going along. Again, I know I'm focused on the high-end guys, but it's not that we have like flat-out 3K guys to get to, but we have so much 4K value, 5K value that I find it pretty easy. Um, we're just getting bombarded with news coming in here. So uh, there's a lot to be kind of changing up here. I think Jay Ivey just got a little bit more interesting. This is somebody even against yeah. Philadelphia that I was paying quite a quite a bit of attention to. When you don't have Cunningham out there, Jaden Ivey, the usage just takes off in a pretty meaningful little way. Uh, he's now played 32, 31 minutes the last two, 30 and a half, 32% usage here uh, without Cade Cunningham out on the floor. So at 6,600 with the shooting guard eligibility, that is one that just showed up just now. Yeah, very different now. It came out you know, 25 seconds ago, Cade out. Joel Embiid available to play as well. Uh, we weren't really expecting anything different, but... Probably the others help to say that today. And it's looking like it's possible that DeAnthony Melton actually gets back today, which is massive for Philly if he can be healthy heading into the playoffs. Not that it matters all that much. Number one guy in leverage in the boom bust tool right now, Bruce Brown, three and a half percent owned, 14% optimal, shooting guard, small forward eligible, 5,400, no Grady Dick now. Are you interested in Bruce Brown? Not really, which is... Uh, I... <laughs> I just get a little bit worried about what happens with this Toronto team when he doesn't start. Like, I think that's the biggest issue I have because I'm assuming he doesn't start, aren't you? Like, like I'm assuming he doesn't. So it's going to be Barrett, Trent, Olenek. Who am I missing? Barrett, Olenek. Agbaji is going to start. I was yeah. Gary Trent. And I think Freeman Liberty starts. I don't think Brown does. If Brown starts, yeah, he would fall into the realm of GPP play. But I think Freeman Liberty has been kind of the starter in these spots where Brown has even been out there. I think we just have it flip-flopped at the moment. So I think that that's pretty, that's pretty live to change. I think he's pretty sneaky even coming off the bench, just given really? the fact that Quickly's not there. And now the fact that Grady Dick's not there. I mean, that's two pieces of that rotation. I mean, if it weren't for the matchup, I wouldn't think about it. Because like 25, Fair. 26 minutes of Bruce Brown wouldn't do it on a slate like this, where now we have so many spots. Like Miami just got a little bit more interesting with certain pieces with no Terry Rozier on the floor. Um, Duncan Robinson's now out for the foreseeable future. So I think there's like something sneaky to mine out of there with Tyler Hero potentially at 6,800. Um, I don't know, but it feels like I'm getting a lot more minutes with him and Bruce Brown, obviously completely different price point, but it's just like, for me, those tournament plays that I want to get to are guys that 
are unimpeded to like 34, 35 minutes and then have the decent fantasy rates. Like Bruce Brown is so frustrating because he's kind of more of a, a box score stuffer. He's not going to be the guy who goes out and puts up 25, 30% usage in specific spots. And once you know it, we just got the Raptors starting lineup. It is indeed the one I just said. Freeman Liberty, okay. uh, Trent Agbaji, Barrett Olenek. So we'll take go. a look at what happens here. I don't think that Bruce Brown number is going to maintain in the boom bust tool, but um, I, I wasn't really interested in him to begin with. Do we need to start having a conversation about Patrick Beverly for today? Yeah, he. Yeah, I saw he's starting, correct? We saw that he come is in. He's starting in place of Malik Beasley today, which is interesting. I think it makes more sense for them. Like, Malik Beasley should be somebody who is like a guy off the bench, actually let him shoot threes. Not like a Norman Powell where he can create his own shot by any means, but like Malik Beasley with my Timberwolves was always very, very frustrating. Like, I would always want him to be that second unit guy, to be that dude, but it'd always be like him starting alongside Cat and Ant. And it's just like, what are we supposed to do with you? Like, there's not a ton of utility other than have him sit in the corner and shoot threes. Like, he's basically doing what P.J. Washington's doing, but Malik Beasley's an actually good shooter over there. And, you know, P.J. Washington can guard multiple positions where Beasley's, that's not really his thing. Um, I I get it. Like, Pat Bev, 4,700, put him in for like 25 minutes. I, I'm not going to probably go crazy with it by any means because Beverly's at like 0.81. It's a tough Boston spot, even if Boston's not playing the regulars, regular minutes, but um, I'd probably be more inclined to do something else. Is Beverly somebody showing up for you? Uh, not right now. I haven't, I haven't run anything at this point. I was just thinking okay. about him being there. 4,700 is probably a little bit more than you would like that price to be for getting this sort of news. I think, I think it's interesting just because if Drew Holiday was still the point guard of the Bucks, you would never do this. But I think yep. you have to do it because Dame is so bad defensively that Malik Beasley also can't guard a one or a two. And now your your two point of attack defenders from the guard line are just dead dead to rights. So maybe Beverly changes that up a little bit, and then you know you try to bring Beasley in, but maybe early for Dame and stagger it that way. Because you want to get him out there just rain in threes. The, the floor spacing's there, but if you got to hide him, then get him off the floor with Dame so you don't have two zero defenders out there. Yep, I, I totally get strategically why they're doing it. I, I'm with you there. From a DFS perspective, I'm probably not going to do anything about it. Um, yeah. More than likely. But why is Cameron Payne? I just refreshed. Uh, I'm about to get to that what one too. Happened? Campaign starting for the Philadelphia 76ers. Son of a bitch. Okay. Alongside Kelly Oubre, Tobias Harris, Nick Batum, and Joel Embiid. Now campaign in the starting lineup at 3,900. Certainly more interesting than Pat Bev. Yes, he is. Yes, he is by a lot. And I was going to yeah. say, I didn't see that news come in. I'm trying to keep track with everything. I was just trying to find every single access to try to get money down on Keontae George props. So that was an enjoyable experience. Somebody literally said exactly what I was doing in the, in the, in the chat. So shout out to them. They're real ones. The problem now is that like, it's not like we're short on value. Creating all of this additional value isn't really necessary. It just makes the picking the right value play way more difficult. Like, I don't think that, campaign's gonna look better than jordan goodwin or scotty pippen or xavier simpson is he no but he is at a completely different price point that allows for you to get to a 3900 dollars piece and then if 3900 dollars piece goes for the 30 35 you have the opportunity to get to Jokic and Doncic and wemby and rotate those three around because when you're talking about guys who are at 66 65 64 fantasy points respectively and then there's a drop off to everybody else on the slate rotating around those threes can be essentially like just as valuable if they go for like their median outcomes and then you know if you get these wemby's 75 80 point explosions. I mean, we all know the upside that all three carry. It's not like I need to tell you, but um, what campaign does is he actually gives you access to two of them in a way where you're able to play a lot of the really good secure value, or at least the Memphis guys that we know are playing tons of minutes, as opposed to just like two other mid-level guys, maybe in that two V two. But um, I'm just going to let the Sims kind of do the, the, the sorting of that for me, not have to add a whole hell of a lot to it. He's going to be 3% like he is in the boom bus tool. Yeah, but I don't think that's going to be the case, obviously. So um, I'm going to have to figure out what that ownership is in the next 10, 15 minutes, and we'll go from there. Phil, you're not going to like the answer to this one. Super chat from Phil. Uh, with all the value, rank the payups. 
That was the first segment of the show. <laughs> Victor Wembanyama at the top of the list. If that helps, we can shorten this one up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, Jokic, Jokic, Jokic for me. Jokic, then Luka? Yep, those are the yeah. three. But there I'm go. going to get to all of them. Any other guys that we're looking at now that aren't pulling that much ownership that you're getting to? <sighs> Some updating stuff. So I, I just got all the Detroit stuff updated on my side. Um, I am going to be playing some Jaden Ivy even against Philly. So that's going to be an enjoyable experience. I did we get the Jalen Duran stuff? That is the other thing I was seeing because he wasn't on the injury report. I want him potentially now, probably not going to be using a center spot on Jalen Duran at this point in time. Um, was looking at that earlier today. Yeah, he's he's in. Yeah, so I'm just saying I'm not going to use a center spot on him here. I want to get to uh, anything with the Rosier news now that he just got downgraded to out because with hero back, it almost feels like I shouldn't care that much, but Jimmy Butler at 8,100. I think I'm going to be getting myself there looking at some of what Miami has to play for 48% chance to get the eight seed. But if you can get up to that seven seed and make that a home game looks pretty useful. Um, We got the exact starting lineup we expected there from Detroit. That is shocking to me. We also got the exact member question from Ace of Spades that we expected. DK Tears, best <laughs> options. Here we go. Doncic, Jokic, Giannis, Wemby. Only one answer here. I didn't hear you, but I'm going to assume Luca. if you said those three together. You're going Luca? No, uh, it includes Wemby. Oh, it had Wemby? Yeah, then we want Wemby. All right. Sabonis, Tatum, Edwards, and Murray. That is Sabonis by a lot. Yes, it is. Halliburton, Fox, Brunson, Irving, Lillard. I can't pull up my stuff. Um, Based on the way you said that, I'm going to either go Fox or Brunson because, again, I know those are the two low 9K guys that I have around like 48. Yeah, that's Brunson for me. Uh, Bam Adebayo, Paolo Bancaro, DeMar DeRozan, Jalen Green. Holly Paolo now with no fronds. Yeah, and uh, we're cheering for unders on DeRozan, by the way. Oh, I'm so here for that. Uh, Yeah, there's going to be... There's going to be some OG and Anobi in his life. That'll be fun. I hope there's a lot of it. Tier five, Pascal Siakam, My, Miles Bridges. Ooh, just give me more of that name, please. Uh, Jalen Brown, Fred Van Vliet, Jimmy Butler, Rudy Gobert. Uh, Jimmy Butler for me. I would rather lose my money than say that, but it's Jimmy Butler. <laughs> I don't mind the Pascal Siakam revenge narrative alert in that okay. spot. Mm-hmm. And then finally, Vooch, Jalen Johnson, R.J. Barrett, Denny Avdia, Jordan Poole, and Josh Giddy. R.J. Barrett. Yeah, gotta be. Gotta be. Missing too many dudes. Good spot as well. So thank you, Ace of Spades. And now we keep it moving. You you got done talking about Christopher Nolan earlier. You didn't seem to be a big fan of Oppenheimer, but maybe that doesn't matter. For the nuke of the night. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. There goes my penis. Oh no. Who nuking? Oh boy. Friends, we have a phenomenal slate with phenomenal value, with phenomenal everything everywhere. And obviously, I could cop out. I could just give you one of the spend-ups that are very, very obvious to be going after and to be firing up. I could talk about, you know, the 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 exotic play of the night that Josh had as well, Luke Cornett, uh, somebody who we expect to be playing a lot, lot more here. But let's get a little bit grimy here because I think there is a huge trepidation, it would appear, to play this Timmy Allen character, and I don't understand why you wouldn't just jam him at shooting guard 3,800 Memphis. He has positive leverage right now, 9.1%. I know absolutely nothing about this human being. All I know is that there are no pieces on Memphis that should be sub 10% that are in the starting lineup. I don't know what these minutes are going to look like, but I know they have to have high twos, low threes in front of every single one of these dudes. Brandon Clark is not going to play over 25, 26 minutes. They need to limit those. This Pereira character is no longer there, so that's problematic. And then you got Gigi Jackson, Scotty Pippen Jr. They're all going to eat up a ton of this ownership here, but he's 3,800, and assuming he ends up in this starting lineup, he just got a 10-day contract. He is not somebody that anybody knows Jack Diddley squat about, but he is somehow the lowest owned piece on the Memphis Grizzlies. And I just repeat, anybody somehow. who I'm going to project for over 30, what? 
You're good. Timmy Allen. Nuke of the night. He's somehow the lowest owned grizzly. Some you're not you're you're surprised to hear that Tim Timmy Allen <laughs> isn't pulling the most ownership for the Memphis Grizzlies. So how could that be? <laughs> Timmy Allen, he's the nuts, baby. Timmy Allen, he's got six percent leverage in the boot bus tool. I keep looking at him and I kind of laugh as I just update everything, and I'm like, shit, I have 30% Timmy Allen. Fuck it. I must not care about money, but he's like a six six dude. He's 24. He's going to go out and get you a little bucket or two. He's going to go out and chuck. My main thing is like anybody who's sub 4K is going to play 30 plus minutes. Just embrace the variance of this. This I am a little bit surprised to have Timmy Allen sub 4K. I think he starts. So uh, he's uh, starting, I think, on Basketball Monster as I'm looking at that. He's starting at a couple of other spots. Like, why not him? Like, we were just playing all these other dudes. He's actually sub 4K. So, uh, t -t -t Timmy, Timmy Allen, your nuke of the night. I think there's a better chance that he's actually Timmy than anything good today. I'm going to put that out there right now. <laughs> Timmy. Okay, so uh, I'm going to give you guys a real NBA player instead of whatever <laughs> creative player Eric just tossed out for the nuke of the night. I think he was around too much of the radiation from that nuke. <sighs> I think this guy's, guy's going to play big minutes. And because of all the guys that are missing, I think this game uniquely fits him. He's going to get talked about a lot less, and he's going to be half the ownership of a lot of the guys that are in his range. He's point guard, shooting guard eligible. He's 4,400. We have him 17% optimal, 15% owned. A lot of the other guys that are above him are pulling some negative leverage, but not he, not the nuke of the night, Malachi Branham. Oh, Malachi Branham, two and a half assists. Bet that earlier in the day. I have no idea how that number is existing when he's going to play 30 plus minutes. Uh, Malachi Branham, I think that's still available on Pick'em. Let me see actually if that got juiced up. But it was plus money this morning when I woke up and I just started laughing. I had to fire that up. Okay. We've made it to 645, which means we got to talk a little bit about Sleeper. They are the presenting sponsor of this show. Make sure you hit the like button. They like that the most. They also like uh, hooking you guys up with a little bit of extra loot. Click the link in the description or the one in chat. You can get up to $500 on your first deposit. Take advantage of these deposit bonuses, guys. It's the best thing you could possibly do. Play through it and then figure out if you still want to be there. But acquiring the money should be your main goal. That's what you're doing when you're trying to play these sites. Do it right out of the gate with your deposit. They've got dynamic payouts, so you can 100x a card, which is honestly sounds pretty fun to do. I would probably do that constantly if I were playing on Sleeper and giving out those plays. Let me know if you want those plays. Put it in the comment section of this video. But either way, you can sign up using the link below. Not to mention, this is the perfect thing to combine with the Masters promo for a dollar on Odd Shopper. You get a week's worth of Sleeper plays on Odd Shopper to boost up all of the play that you're doing with whatever you got from that deposit bonus. A perfect synergy. So click the link in chat, go sign up at Sleeper, grab up to $500 on your first deposit. Who's getting too much ownership? Who, who are the fades for today? Since we can't get too much Timmy Allen in our lineups, who are we trying to get away from? Uh, Sandra Mamukashvili right now is somebody okay. at 4,500 that I'm just lower on. Um, we saw him get reduced down to 23 minutes last time out. Again, I think he probably starts here in this spot, but I'll at least wait to see what ends up happening there before. I mean, it's it's pop, you never know. So we'll be on high alert for that one. I think your guy Luke Cornett is getting undercut by me purely because of what I'm doing and spending up at center. That it seems to be the case here. And then uh, Julian Champagny shorting pretty much the Spurs that aren't necessarily Wemby here. 4,600 for him. I like getting to Anthony Gill. I like getting to Patrick Baldwin on the Washington side, even in a terrible matchup against Minnesota. Just a lot cheaper. And, you know, I don't feel like I'm missing out for a whole hell of a lot here with Champagny. 0.77 fantasy point per minute guy. Actually do prefer getting to your guy Branham. Uh, a little bit more over him. I know the minutes have been absolutely out of control, insane here for him, but 4,600 now, a lot different than sub 4K or 4,300 like he was last time around the block. So uh, for me, there's that. Last guy too, Brandon Clark. I don't get it. Um, Brandon Clark is 5K center only. I just don't see a minutes upside with him. And I think the minutes have just started to catch up here. 24, or sorry, the, the, the price has started to catch up here. He's been 5K now for two consecutive games. That's different than when he was 3K, 3,300, 4K. Like Brandon Clark, yeah. 
5K, he'd really have to get after it. And if this game goes to overtime, if this game goes anywhere beyond the 25 minutes that he'll play tops, he's done. He's not seeing the floor. So there's no right tail to it. I would much prefer my guys had some kind of a minutes upside. So Brandon Clark, I'm going to have zero of. Yeah, I would much rather go to someone like Wendell Carter over Brandon Clark at a very similar price tier, just because I think there's a little bit more on that right end where like you wouldn't be surprised if Wendell Carter got to 30 minutes today. They've been ramping him up. I would be shocked if something like that happened in, uh, I almost said, yeah, in Memphis. Um, Fades for me. Who am I getting away from? Let's see. So we've got campaign now in for 46% ownership, 24% optimal with the amount of point guard value that's out there and the amount of value in general. I'm not sure his $3,900 salary has as much utility as it normally would. Given the fact that you've got someone like Jordan Goodwin out there, you've got a point guard shooting guard, eligible Christian Brown out there who you can get to as like a way to be a little bit different than the 46% ownership that's coming in. I don't want to say that I don't like campaign because on a point per dollar basis, he's obviously fantastic, but we have so many dudes that we can pay down for in the 4k and 3k range that I don't necessarily think that I need to get to the guy that is currently now projected to be the highest owned guy on today's slate. Interesting. I am just updating everything here one more time because we still had him at 3%. Uh, Yeah, 46% you said there. I'm simulating this out, and I will tell you whether or not that is something that I agree with. I'm assuming I do because if you get that kind of ownership the way that I can go about this, I I bet I undercut it a little bit here. I like the Pippin play more. I like the Goodwin play more. It sounds like you're on board with that as well. So it's more of like the positionality and the minutes for some of those Memphis guys. They're just... Far, far, far more pronounced and and far better, I think, to get to than a campaign where you're sharing the floor with some, uh, you're sharing the floor with Joel Embiid. That's a little bit different here going forward. Yeah, that that's a big piece of this too for me. And I, if I didn't say that, I appreciate you saying okay. it. This is not him stepping into like nobody being around on this team now. Yeah, I'm surprised that he's even starting. Uh, he's campaign, but you don't like he's bad defensively. That Joel Embiid makes up for that pretty well, so probably better to hide him in that situation. My expectation is that he's not going to be involved uh, as much as you would love for him to be involved, given his ownership. Still looking good, though. Any other fades for you? Anybody? Right now, Payne has the highest negative leverage. Jordan Goodwin not far behind at negative 18, but are you light on anybody else? Yeah, so we talked about the main ones there. Um, Paulo Bancaro, I... (sighs) He's 8,400 without Franz Wagner, and I'm still not getting to him. I don't know yeah. why, necessarily. Um, he's the only guy, really, at the power forward spot that uh, it looks like I'm just getting to more Anthony Gill. I'm getting to some G.G. Jackson in my life. Um, it's it's just not showing up for me here at, at 8,400. It's kind of like a no-man's land where 50 doesn't burn you necessarily from him at 8,400. So a lot more stars and scrubsy or, you know, maybe not like extreme because I'm getting to a lot of the four five K range, not necessarily all of the three K range, but uh, I just prefer getting up a little bit above Paulo Bancaro. So he's getting omitted just by where his price point is. We've got about eight minutes to go until lock, which means we have to finish it off. We have one more thing to talk about guys. And this one's very simple. Someone out there today is not going to be the guy that you wanted him to be. He might stink a little bit with his performance, but it won't stink as bad as if Amber Heard took a steaming dump in the center of your bed. So who is the Amber Heard play of the day? Well, I mean, I just brought up Paulo Bancaro. I have zero of him, so that could end up taking a steaming pile of crap all over my chest in a non-fun way. Um, not that there's a fun way that that could happen, but I am quite certain Mamu Mamukashvili as well. That's another dude where if he ends up starting, I doubt I still get to a ton of him. Prefer Patrick Baldwin, prefer some of these other power forwards, it would appear. And then guys I am rostering, Timmy Allen. I have a ton of Timmy Allen and he's popping in the boom bus tool yet again here to a certain extent, uh, tw- uh, 25, 30% in my first couple of runs through that. And uh, I bet I kind of stay around there or maybe get a little bit more here in my last pass before lock. So uh, Timmy Allen in the 
way that I actually have him and then Mamu in the way that I don't. I think this is actually now campaign because if you see it the opposite way, like if you're, he's pulling this negative leverage, if you naturally get away from him, the opposite side of this one is, oh, Joel Embiid is there taking so much attention that campaign gets to the basket at will, diming up people in e extra space and doesn't need an overwhelming score to beat 3,900, 42% currently to boom for today. That is the fifth highest boom score of the day. Two of the others are Jokic and Wemby. The other two are center Luke Cornett and Jordan Goodwin. Maybe, just maybe, that value is too much to ignore. The spacing works. The minutes end up being more than we expect. And campaign goes out there and just says, well, I am the required value piece of the day. Even with massive negative leverage. I'm with you. I mean, that's kind of the way I view Cornet to a certain extent, but I'm actually playing a little bit of Cornet here. Um, I, I'm i kind of getting talked into by just like ROI decreasing some campaign in my life because we're, we're kind of seeing this the same way. It's not, it's not even that we don't think campaign is a good value because that's not the way of looking at it. It's just that there's so many other pieces of value. So it's like, all right, maybe he could be best available on a point per, per dollar basis here, but we can then take shots on guys like Timmy Allen, who are just known NBA players. So let's just do that instead. That was Time for questions. We have uh, five minutes to go. So if anybody has any final things to know, get us out here. John asked the question, Fultz or Payne? We also have Fultz in the starting lineup today. Yeah, I'm going to go Payne for sure. Yeah, I, I agree. Um... Line up scene. Let's see what else we got coming in here. Can you say something on TJ McConnell? Any McConnell thoughts for you? Uh, if he gets the minutes and this is a massive blowout, congratulations. You probably did something in your life and you're probably going to win some money. But uh, I think what ends up happening is people chase that too much or they, they like, I don't think TJ McConnell is some standout piece on today's slate. I did think about him for like two seconds, and then I just kind of realized, well, yeah, I, I could just get to like all of the other point guards. And TJ McConnell always has like this built in, like standard ownership that just shows up. I know he's projected for like 2%. He'll usually end up like four or 5% in spots like this, but he is 5,500 now. Just absolutely not. There you go. RJ Barrett or Bridges? RJ Barrett. Uh, I'm assuming we're saying uh, Miles Bridges because McCall is not on this slate. So yeah, it's going to be the former for me. Yeah, I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's not the guy that isn't playing today. Just me, though. It's just talking through it, Josh. Thank you. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, any pick six plays? Yeah, there's a lot of them today. Uh, there's a lot of really good ones today, too. Uh, 13 and a half. We like less on that for... Uh, let me pull this up here. I just had it up a second ago. So PJ Washington was on my video earlier at 12 and a half. I liked more on the points there, but 13 and a half, kind of an interesting little spot to maybe short him if he's going to end up getting some steam. Uh, cause it's all relative. It's peer to peer. And if other people think a play is good and you think he's going to be very, very popular, you can cheer for the opposite, not saying you have to play it. You generally want to be playing best available still because people haven't figured out exactly what the edge is to pick six yet. So just play best available to a certain extent, but um, under 13 and a half points for Jabari Walker is one that I'm a big fan of as well. Uh, he gets the Herb Jones, New Orleans Pelicans matchups. They're going to be really, really fun there. He's been playing massive minutes, but DeAndre Ayton uh, has been just beasting out there. I took the less on 26 and a half PRA for Jabari Walker earlier. So in that late night hammer, not on this slate by any means, but uh, pick six, I think that is a decent start to, to, to your card. Two and a half minutes to go. We're going to be live on playback after this. We're live right there now, but it's going to be exclusive on playback in two and a half minutes. Go to playback.tv slash stochastic or click the link that pops up in the chat or description of this video. We're watching NBA games for the next hour. We're talking news, sweating bets, just talking what we're playing, all of that kind of stuff. If you have a league pass, you can just join us and see all the games at the same time we do. If you don't, Cross your fingers, you might be able to get one of our 40 VIP passes. Uh, any love for DeLon Wright? 
I don't have any. I don't think he's getting enough minutes on a day with all this value. Zero percent. Um, one and a half minutes to go. <sighs> any love for John Isaac? No. None. High Smith or Champagne on Fandle? Never High Smith. Yeah, legitimately play a worse fantasy point per guy, per minute guy. I dare you. I'm late lotion play, and what news do I need? Super chat from Phil. Put put, put the lotion on the skin. Uh, Victor Wembanyama, just all the points and all the land. Oh shit! I know I missed that one. Safe, you had a uh, question before. Hi there. Thoughts on Johnny J on the Jazz? I didn't have any, and then I forgot that the question was there. My apologies. Good job. Good effort. He's not someone that looks like anything today, correct? No. No. Yeah, 1% optimal, 1% owned. Uh, <laughs> ooh, Arkathelza is paying down for Delon. I don't, don't do know that. why. Please, please do not do that. I beg of you, do not do that. Um, give me the money instead. That that seems very unnecessary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's a lot to squeeze out there. No, there is not. Oh my god, my baseball lineups. I hate them so much. I like mine. You do? Who are what's uh, your highest stone stack? Uh probably the Mets. Okay. So damn to your team. Mets, Royals, A's, and then I have a t I have I'm over the field on the Diamondbacks, but none of none of it is a five man or a four man. Gotcha. And then Carlos Rodon is in just about everything. Oh, I, I like the Rodon shout out. Um, I'm playing some of that pitcher from Chicago that I can't even remember Brown the last name. Saw that 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 looks like a good time. Uh, go Dodgers. So that'll be enjoyable. I'm with you. I am playing some Reynaldo Lopez, but I'm also playing some Mets on the other side and go Yankees. Guys, we're at the top of the hour. Thank you for being here. Shout out to Sleeper for being the sponsor. And do not forget whether you play DFS, sports betting, or pick them. Odd Shopper Stochastic. The promo code is Masters. It ends Thursday morning when the tournament starts. You got to get in first, but. 40% off on the DFS side, $1 for a week of Odd Shopper. Good luck tonight, everybody. We'll talk to you later. Heading on over to Playback. See you soon.